So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our channel here at uh, CyberDeck. Today's topic is about uh, exclusion operators in Postgres. And um, I just want to point out that this is really one of my most favorite features of all times in Postgres. So I'm really looking forward to presenting those to you because I'm pretty confident that you're also going to like it. So welcome to our show and uh, let's get started. So. Um, before we get started, I just want to say something about uh, our company and myself. Uh, my name is uh, Hans Jung Schoenig. I've been in uh, professional Postgres uh, since the year uh, 2000. And uh, we're basically providing a ton of services. I'm personally a senior Postgres consultant. And um, we, we here at CyberDeck, we offer international Postgres support and consultancy. As you can see, we've got a couple of offices uh, all around the world and uh, we're dealing with some uh, major customers. So which problem are we uh, trying to solve uh, today? Uh, basically, the topic here is, uh, is something which is quite common and everybody has done that uh, before already. Consider the following. We want to book a room, right? So it's as simple as booking a room. And uh, what we want to avoid is uh, that uh, two customers end up in the same room at the same time. So basically what we want to avoid is that people concurrently book the same room. And we also want to make sure that once a booking comes in, that there are no overlappings going on here. So a room can only be rented out to one customer at a time. There must not be any overlaps. And uh, basically, the problem here is that uh, the business logic can be quite hard to implement. It, it sounds easy, but if we look at the problem in more detail, it's basically not that simple if you want to do it uh, in an efficient, uh, scalable way. So let's look at the problem. So in case of room number one, we got uh, two bookings here. So there's one booking, there is some gap in between, there is a second booking. In case of room number three, there is one booking, so we got no problem. But the problem arises if we look at the second room. What we see here is that uh, bookings basically overlap. So two people managed uh, to book the same room at the same time. And this basically causes a major headache because that's, that's certainly not something you want in, in most cases. I mean, unless there's intentional overbooking or something like that. But in this case, it's, uh, it's more like... Um, more like uh, a simple scenario, no concurrent bookings. And that's, that's what we want to solve. So how can we do that? So what Postgres can do for you? Uh, let's dive in and figure out. Um, for quite some time, Postgres has supported something which is generally known as uh, range types, right? So a range type is a special data type which allows us to, uh, to store periods. So traditionally, periods are stored as two fields. So you have one field that says starts, and you have one field that's called ends. And uh, then there is a bunch of check constraints which says, OK, something has to end after it started, et cetera, et cetera. But this basic logic can be put into a data type, right? And it's called the range type. So it could be a TS range, which is a timestamp range, or it could be a date range, or it could be some sort of uh, integer range. So that's, that's basically a range type. So let's see how it works. So in this case, uh, I have uh, two dates, right? So one is um, 22nd of May, 2021. The other one is 28th of May, 2021. And basically it's, it's two fields. But if we put this into a date range, so what we're doing here is we were basically um, forming uh, this range type on the fly. What we see here is it's one field, it's one range. The lower limit is included. The upper limit is, is excluded, right? So we can see that uh, in, our, in our type. But what the type does here is it, it basically assures that the lower boundary has to be less than the upper boundary. So in, in the last example on the slide, you see that a range going from uh, 21 to 2010 is not valid because it violates the rule 
that the upper border always has to be higher than the lower border. So there are automatically some implicit checks going on here. So validation is done automatically by Postgres, which is very, very convenient uh, in this case. Okay, so that's a range type, right? It has been in Postgres for, for many, many years. So, and based on those uh, range types, there are a couple of operators which are uh, provided by Postgres core. So if we want to check, uh, for example, if the 24th of May is part of the range going from 22nd uh, to 28th, what it says is basically true. I mean, there are some weird um, operators here, like, uh, like, um, like the one you see here, but it's, it's, basically, it's basically quite easy to do. It, it's very well documented and it, um, it, it's, it, it basically covers everything uh, you will need uh, in this in this area. So this is a simple range which checks for contains, right? So it's the contains operator. So uh, let's put this into a real solution. Uh, as you might have seen already in Postgres, uh, Postgres offers more than just one index type. So everybody will be familiar with B trees. Some people might have heard about uh, geospatial indexing, which is often done with Gs. People might have heard of uh, gene indexes for full text search and so on and so on. And uh, what we have here basically is we created a simple table. Uh, the room is an integer number. And then there is this uh, my range, which, uh, which represents the date range you've just seen before. And now comes the magic. It says exclude using gist. What we want is in case the same room is booked twice. So if the room is identical, room with equals, the range must not overlap. So bookings might overlap if they, if they uh, handle different rooms, but if the room is equal, the, the range must not overlap. And the beauty here is that GIST is gonna handle all the concurrency. We don't have to worry about uh, locking, etc. It's all basically automat automatically done in, uh, in Postgres, right? So that's what we got here. So this, this basically, those three lines contain all the magic. Postgres does everything for you. So it's super efficient, right? So let's add some data. So the first booking, uh, just like we had before, room number 100, 22nd to 28th of May. Room 849, again, 22nd to 28th. That's no problem because it, it's not the same room. But if somebody tries to book room number 849 from 26 to 13th, then Postgres is going to send us an error message. It says conflicting key value violates exclusion constraint. And then it's going to give us a reason uh, why this is basically the case. So as you can see, everything is handled automatically on the, on the, on the database side for you. And it's very easy to use. So basically, it's just, it's just three lines of code. Right. So automatic error handling, automatic uh, invalidation, et cetera. And what really happens here is that this uh, clause at the end of the create table statement is automatically going to create a gist index for us, right? And which does all the, all the magic really here in, in this example. So, so the magic is really in the way uh, Postgres is handling the, the gist index, okay? But there is a bit more. Let's assume we got a bit of a more of a complicated example here. So let's assume we got a room, we got a speaker, and we got a range. So in this case, we got two things we want to assure. So we must not overbook the room. So it's again room with equals, period with overlaps, but also we want to assure that the same speaker is not allowed to speak at two conferences at the same time. So we add a second exclude using gist clause here, which says speaker with equals period with overlaps. <clears throat> so in this case, Postgres is going to make sure that the room is not overbooked, but also the speaker is not overbooked. Okay, so you can have many, many clauses here and it's, it's again, super easy to use. So let's verify. In this case, um, we, we basically have um, uh, a lesson. And again, we, we, there is proof 
uh, that the lesson uh, might not be held by the same guy uh, concurrently, right? So more constraints. Um, as you can see again here, we added Jane as a second speaker, no problem. And uh, again, it's very easy to assure consistency. I want to point out one thing here that the alternative to what we're doing here is a very brutal table lock and a lot of business logic um, on the application side. So there's no problem with business logic and the application side, don't get me wrong, but if an additional check constraint happens on the database, it ensures that all applications have to apply to the rule. Of course, you can all also do those checks on the application for redundancy reasons, but if you do it on the database side, it's an additional safety net, right? We've seen cases uh, at a bank a couple of years ago where they had the low, 20 million euros in loans outstanding, but they did not know who owed them. They could have fixed that with a check constraint on the database, right? So it's not about whether the business logic is in the database or the business logic is in the application. It's about an additional safety net assuring that nothing bad can happen. And we're talking about three lines of code here, right? So it's not like, uh, like some, some big magic uh, on the database side. So I, I don't want this to be a religious discussion, just showing you that this is certainly an, uh, an additional safety net here. So still, in many cases, you want to store the data in the traditional way, but make sure that those constraints still apply. So what you can do here is form the, uh, the exclusion constraint uh, on the fly. So in this case, we've got start time, end time, just like we had it before. But in the exclude using gist clause, we, we basically form the, uh, the exclusion constraint on the fly. So you can still have your data the way you know it, but still benefit from this uh, additional functionality, making sure that your data is, uh, is fully consistent and operational. So this is what it looks like if you look at the table definition. Uh, it's basically just uh, two indexes, uh, which uh, is basically an index here, which was added. And, and then of course you see uh, what uh, the way it, it has been defined. So it's, it's, it's easy to read, it, it's, it's easy to see that it's there, okay? So conclusion, um, it's a super powerful feature. It's very easy to use, it's super useful. And uh, ensuring uh, consistency on the database level does make sense as an additional safety net. So don't um, consider this to be a business logic on the database. I mean, you could argue that the primary key is also business logic on the database, which of course it isn't. So, um, and, it, and again, it's, it's very easy to use. So um, I want to thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope you like uh, the topic. Uh, if, you, if you like the topic, uh, please uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment in the comment section, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and certainly get in touch with us. And uh, as always, we're looking forward uh, to seeing you again.